Hi everyone and welcome. I'm down here in my wormery. And I've got one of my bins over here on the bench. It's the bin that I even worked on earlier today. And earlier today, I was only in here to really till the material around, stir it up. I was trying to help aerate the material, move some of the more dry stuff on the surface down and bring some of the more wet sur material up to the top surface. And, you know, after I got done, I thought to myself, I bet you we could probably get the migration of the worms in this bin started. So I'm going to do exactly that. One of the people on my previous video, the previous video is interesting because of the it includes a little time lapse of the top surface of this bin, showing all the worms zipping around, cruising around on the top surface overnight, all last night. And it's um it's kind of a cool time lapse. But one of the people commented how the worms in the bin seemed a little bit sluggish. And after stirring up the material earlier today, I felt like I could smell a weird odor, like maybe some dead worms or something. So maybe there is something going awry in here. And maybe the sooner the better in terms of getting the worms migrated. Today, I'm going to be pushing all the material over to one side, setting up this partition wall here. Not meant to keep the worms from moving from one side of the bin to the other. It's really just to help me see where the feeding zone starts and where the finished compost begins. So I only use this as a visual aid for myself. And we're going to be using some of these foods here, as well as a variety of different bedding items like paper and cardboard and some other stuff I've got off on the side here to set up a nice new feeding zone for them and try to initiate the migration of the worms out of this finished compost. But you know what, there's this one weird looking worm in here. So dark in color. Now that I've got it in my hand, it looks a little bit more pink, but one side of it that was facing up seemed so, so dark. And you know, when I look through here, there is signs of worms that appear to be in distress for sure. Some of them look like they're just stuck in the material, like they can't even move, or maybe they're just deceased worms already. And obviously you can't tell on the video, but there is a little bit of an odor coming out of here too. So uh, it does seem like it's time to get this bin set for migration, give the worms a more comfortable place to move out into, because I'm starting to wonder if this material is even healthy anymore. If I can't use it as castings, so be it. That's fine. I'll just discard it. I'll probably go out in the yard anyway. Probably still get used in some form out in the um, out in the backyard. But right now, the important thing is that I want to give these worms a place to move out to, give them some fresh food, fresh bedding. So if you're really interested in seeing the material all stirred up and all the worms and even the time lapse of how these worms moved around the top surface all last night, it's a pretty cool video. I'll put a link to it up in the corner. But for now, all we're going to be doing is setting up the horizontal migration feeding zone. It's been 32 days since this bin was last fed. And during certain check-ins, I've even pulled out large food chunks that I stumbled on during check-ins of, of the material. So there's probably not a whole lot of edible material left in this bin for these poor worms either. I'm sure they're going to be happy to find some nice fresh banana, some nice fresh carrots, cucumber, giving them a nice, nice assortment of delicious foods to eat. So... I'm going to build the, the horizontal migration feeding zone over on this side. So all we're going to do is we're going to stack up the material over here, set up the feeding zone, backfill it, and then we'll let the whole process begin. I guess the feeding zone will probably get covered with a piece of plastic too to help it um to help it stay nice and damp. See, this is these are some of the examples of what I'm talking about in terms of things not looking right. I don't think this worm is even alive anymore. It looks really bad. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's happening in this bin, but it does seem like it's time to get the worms moved out as quickly as possible. <laughs> so, this is just a peach pit. I think I'm going to just put it in with the food so it's separate from the castings. Here, too, a chunk of banana stem. If I find any large chunks of food in here, I'll just set it aside. And we'll just use them to build up the feeding zone over here. So... Not a lot to it. It's really just making a little space to set up the feeding zone in. And the stuff is so damp. I, I really did want to leave time for the stuff to dry out, but you know, with the smell of um, some dead worms, it's not terrible. I think I only noticed it after I stirred the material up. And after somebody commented in the previous video about the sluggish, apparent sluggishness of these worms, and then I got to thinking about the funny odor. 
I, I started to think, you know, maybe it is best that I just get this migration started ASAP. So, you can see this material is very heavily populated with worms. They've done a wonderful job breaking all the material in this bin down. It was always a very fast composting system. Anytime I would put food into this box, worms would just gobble it up, one, two, three. So there's plenty of mouths to feed. And I'm sure that the migration zone is going to be pretty effective. I think it's going to round up a large number of worms pretty fast. So it's probably a good idea that I just come back down here, even again, maybe a third time today. <laughs> maybe not to film, but at least to start setting up environments for these worms to be moved into once I've managed to pull some of them together. Because it could happen pretty quick, you know. I think in some of my other systems too, I've been able to check back in on one of these horizontal migrations after only you know a week and a half or so and find a good number of worms ready to be relocated and usually at that time there's still a lot more worms to be collected out of the finished castings so i'll usually set up the feeding zone kind of rebuild it and with that in mind i always try to build the feeding zone with fairly large chunks of material stuff that i could just shake off get the worms off of it, and then recycle those bits of material to rebuild the feeding zone. So I always think that the stuff that, you know, has already been in a bin for a while, been in a worm bin for a while, <laughs> is already kind of ha pretty heavily populated with all the different types of microbes and bacteria and everything, and all the fungi, all the different stuff that makes um, an environment really cozy and comfortable for the worms. So I hate the idea of... Um, you know, completely starting from scratch on a feeding zone. I always like to try to use sort of recycled materials for that purpose. I'll do a quick sort of loose fit in here, see how it fits. It seems like it fits pretty good. And I don't have a whole lot of material with which to build this feeding area. Um, so I'm just thinking in terms of how large to make it. I don't know. I might not even have that much to put in here. I might have to come up with some extra bedding type materials to use in here. So I'm just going to kind of bring the material very loosely up against the side of this over here. And then maybe we could use one of these pieces of cardboard that's about the right size to hold things in place temporarily. And then we can start prop plopping in our um, our materials. So I've got, what do I got? I've got some pieces of paper that I sort of crumbled up into little balls. Figured that would be maybe a good foundation to place things on top of. I've got a couple um, used coffee filters here. There's even some used coffee still within. So let's go ahead and use these. Here again, I'm not gonna tear them up into little tiny pieces. I'm gonna try to keep the paper pretty large so that it's really easy to kind of shake it off and recycle it when it comes time to rebuild these feeding zones. Just trying to think ahead a little bit in terms of what I'm going to have to be doing in here next time I check in. I think we've created a nice little foundation here to plop in some stuff. So why don't we start bringing in some of these tasty food items. Here we have a cabbage leaf. I'm wondering if I should add a little bit of moisture to all this paper too. My, my idea for this was to maybe put a plastic covering so that the moisture that's coming out of here would actually be captured and maybe, you know, absorbed by some of the dry materials in here. I'm not sure if that's such a good idea. It might be better to actually incorporate some moisture right into the, the build of the bin right off the get-go. So maybe we'll leave some of those drier items down below. They'll probably get some of the moisture from these frozen foods as they start to thaw and they start to melt. But the stuff that we put on top of it, I guess we'll try to dampen it a little bit and spray it down. I wonder if the worms are already sensing the presence of some food here. The stuff is all frozen, but it'll thaw out pretty quickly. And then it'll start becoming really tempting for the worms, I believe. Uh, I, thought, I think I should have prepped with maybe a little bit more material here. <laughs> here too maybe I should have soaked this cardboard ahead of time but we'll moisten it here really quick using my spray bottle shouldn't take too long 
Maybe I should aim this way too, right? So that any overspray ends up down in the feeding area. After all, I do want to see these castings try to dry out a little bit. Make it into yet another reason for the worms to want to leave the material because of the dryness. If I dampen it, then they'll possibly want to stay there. So to me, it's always sort of a, it's like a multifaceted kind of approach where I'm thinking, you know, reduce the food, reduce the moisture, try to stack the deck in such a way that the worms are really going to be motivated to want to leave the, the contents of the bin and leave the, um, the casting behind for me to harvest them. So what else do we have? Let's get another piece of cardboard in here. I've got a few more other chunks of food here. I wonder if I could snap this banana in half and put one half of it over here, put the other half of it over here. And I've still got this last chunk of cucumber in this peach pit, which is not going to get broken down anytime soon, that's for sure. <laughs> We'll just throw in this piece of cucumber over here next to this piece of a uh, banana. So right away, I think that this is going to be a pretty nice, cozy spot for the worms to be hanging out in. Um, you know, I've also got a few old napkins over here. Could throw in some of this paper too. Again, trying to keep it a little bit large. That it's easy to handle although this stuff once it gets wet I got a feeling it's going to be pretty fragile probably just going to tear apart into pieces I just grabbed whatever I had sitting around sometimes you might see me using leaves and stuff but I checked my box I didn't have any leaves in the box so um, I guess I could always come back in here with some other materials and sort of build up this feeding area a little bit better if I wanted to Drop in last couple chunks of cardboard I've got here for this little project. Forgot to dampen them before putting them in. So hopefully that's enough right there. One last piece. We'll give that a squirt down too. And it's kind of a tall system we could even use this piece here too right might as well just stick that right down where it came from since there's not a lot of material right in the middle where that was give that a little squirt down too so wondering if I've got maybe a piece of newspaper or something I could kind of throw across the top of this I'd like to have one other at least large piece of something I can cover up with here let me see what I could find. What I came up with is a piece of paper here out of this little newspaper. It's a Hungarian newspaper. See here's the Hungarian flag, red, white, and green. European Union flag. And um, it's interesting, Bitch. That's the name of uh, a town in Austria. That's actually Vienna, Bitch, as far as I know. Bitchy Nuplo. So that's the Vienna um, Nuplo. That's diary. Vienna diary. So this is probably not even a newspaper from Hungary it might be a newspaper from Austria <laughs> I don't I don't subscribe to any of this sort of stuff it's my mom's so once in a while when I go visit I just uh, tap into her recycling container when I know I need paper here at home in my wormery so this paper isn't really newsprint it seems more like almost copy paper it's definitely got a little bit more substance to it than news newsprint I figured this would be a pretty good sized chunk of paper that we could use to sort of cover things up here over the feeding zone. 
not go too out of my way to be overly precise. I just figured some sort of additional little bit of covering. But we're also going to cover up with plastic here too. Because I want the moisture that's in this feeding area to definitely stay in here, not, not evaporate, not dry out. Because as this material over here continues to dry off, being exposed to the air, I'm not going to cover it. I'm just going to let it keep drying. The worms will eventually, you know, find that they don't really want to be in such dry stuff. And they'll go looking for something a little bit more comfortable. And hopefully they'll end up over here in this feeding zone. And hopefully they'll stay. And I think they will. So I'm definitely curious to see how things prog progress in this system over time. But we're going to back up the, um, we're going to back this material up over all these little holes on the, um, the cardboard divider wall, even though it's not really meant to divide anything. It's just sort of a partition, a visual aid for me to see where the material in the bin ends. And the rest of it I just want to kind of level off a little bit for the most part. But it's not terribly important. I like keeping it a little bit more kind of textured, kind of bumpy and lumpy, so I'm not going to try to mat it down or flatten it out. I think by giving it this extra surface area, the texture Hopefully it will allow for it to um, dry a little bit more easily. All right, what else? One last thing. I just wanted to get a plastic covering on here because it's the plastic covering that's going to, you know, let them let the material in this feeding area stay nice and damp. It won't evaporate. It won't lose its moisture. And hopefully it will end up being a spot that the worms are drawn to and want to collect in. So we'll check back in here in a little while, a few more days. But after 32 days, I would think that these worms are probably really pleased to know that there's some fresh food within range. <laughs> so I got a feeling we're going to see a pretty good turnout in here pretty quickly. Especially if there's something going on in this bin that's not healthy for the worms. And I certainly believe that there might be something going on here. Between that really dark colored worm, I don't know if that was this one here or if this is just another one I'm seeing now. It almost seems like these poor little guys are, ugh, I don't know, I'm not sure what's going on, but there's definitely a lot of fairly unhealthy looking worms here and there. And I don't want to have any more casualties than I need to, so I'm going to move them out as quickly as I could. All right, everyone, wish me luck. <laughs> Usually my bins work pretty successfully, but this one here might not have as happy ending as I thought it would have. Maybe it's just one of the consequences of allowing the material just to get way too damp and get muddy like this. Because it's definitely way too damp. I should have um, I should have paid closer attention. Eh, whatever. That's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to give me a quick thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Also, if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.